गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स तो फर्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ साइबर लॉ एंड आई पी आर लैब इज वट इज साइबर लॉ वाई डू वी नीड इट ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन यूर डिक्शनल एस्पेक्ट इन साइबर लॉ इशूज तो फर्स्टली वट इज साइबर लॉ बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग डेफिनेशन ऑफ साइबर लॉ फर्स्टली अंडरस्टैंड वट इज साइबर एंड वट इज लॉ देन कंबाइन दीज टू वर्ड्स so first cyber means related to computer network website data email network atm machines etc so in short cyber is related to computer and information technology or internet so cyber is related to cyber space that is virtual combination of computer and internet now what is law law in is rules that approved by government and valid in certain territory or area and if somebody if some person of that territory volunteering that rules then government can take action against that person it can be imprisonment or fine so now law cyber means cyber space and law means rules so cyber law is the rules that governing cyber space and we can say the rules that applied on crimes that committed in cyber space so now why do we need it in techno savvy environment number of internet user is on rise as we know day by day number of user increased on internet we can uh, see account of twitter in 2020 and 2009 uh, 21 there is a large difference it increased rapidly so number of internet user in increases if a cyber space is worked normally nobody volunteering rule nobody breaks the rule there is no crime in cyber space then it's okay but if there are some rules uh, crimes then cyber law is required so all issues related to cyber crime or internet crime are deal with through cyber law so to get a remedy against cyber crime we can say crime occur in cyber space then the need of cyber law arises as per rule and regulations of cyber law a person who commit a cyber crime is liable to get punishment if anybody break the provisions of law then it allow another person or organization to take legal action against that person so normally in physical world there are some rules like traffic rules if some if a person break the rule volatile the rule then government take action against that person it can be imprisonment or fine as per crime so depend upon crime there are some punishment similarly in cyber space if a person commit a crime in cyber space then rules will be applied and that rules are known as cyber law so to control crimes in cyber space the need of cyber law arises nowadays all transaction related uh, related to shares are done in dmat form known as electronic form as we know today we all most of our transaction do in electronic form so the uh, protection is required so that's why cyber law is required most of companies in india keep their official data in electronic form to avoid the misuse of such data a company can need the assistance of this law as we know nowadays we go uh, we go bank for bank account the enter our data on computer we can say in electronic form so we can say company keep their data in electronic form 
so it can be misused so to avoid the misuse of data that is in electronic form so that's why cyber law is required due to rapid growth of technology as we know day by day technology is increased nowadays government also deal with electronic form for example itr return service tax return also filled in electronic form anyone can be hacking the government portal site easily misuse those forms only under cyber law you can reason to get a remedy against this type of fraud nowadays government also handle their data in electronic form there are various websites by using that websites we can uh, we can use government services so it is possible that government websites can be hacked and your data can be misused so that's why cyber law is required if somebody try to hack any website there are punishment by cyber theft people using credit card and debit card for shopping purpose however some frauds through internet clone those credit card and debit cards card cloning is a technique where someone with help of the internet easily obtain your card details and with the help of cyber law you can easily trace such criminals Now, nowadays we most of the time we use our credit card and debit card for any shopping purpose so our card details can be hacked by a criminal so in that case uh, that case we can take help from cyber cell there are various cyber law with the help of that cyber law we can easily trace such criminals and the last one the main requirement of cyber law is digital signature nowadays most of the company use their digital certificates we can say this digital document so their document have a digital sign but hacker we can say any person can use their digital signature for example your mark sheet by putting so by using some editing software you can create a dmc so that is the misuse somebody try to uh, make a fake document by using digital signature so in that case the uh, victim can take help from cyber law cyber law protect you against such type of frauds so these are the main requirement uh, that arise the need of cyber law so the next uh, topic of experiment 1 is jurisdictional aspects in cyber law issues so firstly what is the jurisdiction jurisdiction gives power to the appropriate court to hear a case and declare a judgment so if there are any uh, cri uh, criminal activity let's take a example of physical world any criminal activity is taken place in physical world for example accident so each territory we can say states like punjab state uh, haryana state we know each state have their own court so jurisdiction means appropriate court have power to hear the case and declare a judgment for example a accident is take, uh, taken place one person from punjab and second person from haryana so now which court can hear the case and declare the judgment punjab court or haryana court so jurisdiction have power to appropriate court Uh, in the jurisdiction there are various types like personal jurisdiction subjective jurisdiction so in that case a suitable appropriate court can hear case and declare judgment for example accident occur in punjab 
and it harm the property of punjab government so in that case punjab court can hear a case and declare a judgment but in cyber law victims and criminal are from different countries so now the main confusion which court take decision which court hear a case and declare a judgment because as uh, because we know internet has no boundaries so no specific jurisdiction can be titled over its use because it is online activity and we can uh, user sources we can communicate over the world in cyber space if there is no volatile of any law then there is no issue but then some action become criminal illegal then a jurisdiction have a crucial role to play because there is there are need to a court to hear a case and declare a judgment for example a robbery in country a a user committing a robbery in country a but he is uh, but he or she is sitting in country b and using the server of country c so in that case three countries are involved so now the main confusion is which country jurisdiction have to take case and clear judgment in cyber space if user server host and person we can say criminal victim and server can, uh, of same country then there is no problem but if these three parties are from different countries then there are a problem then types of jurisdiction first one is personal jurisdiction personal jurisdiction a type of jurisdiction where court can pass judgment on particular party and person it is related to persons parties so jurisdiction can take decision or pass judgment on particular persons but a case a supreme court of usa observed that is it is not suitable for non resident for example punjab high court it can uh, pass judgment on residents of punjab but there are a problem with the non resident like haryana uh, resident but that is later that this problem is solved by minimum contact theory which is allowed jurisdiction over non resident as well according to personal jurisdiction jurisdiction is applied only on territory but there is problem if the victim belongs to that territory but criminal are from other territory in that case later this problem is solved with the help of minimum contact theory the second op, uh, type of uh, jurisdiction is subject matter jurisdiction this type of jurisdiction where court can hear and decide specific case that include a subject matter for example you want to uh, file a case related to environment then you have to Uh, submit your file submit your case in ngt if you if you are goes to another court like a district court then your case will be rejected you have to submit your uh, case you have to file your case in appropriate jurisdiction otherwise your case will be rejected the third type is pecuniary jurisdiction that is related to money and in this each court each jurisdiction have some limit for example uh, jurisdiction one have a limit 20 lakh so you can uh, file your case that is not more than 20 lakh if your case is 40 lakh then you have to uh, go another jurisdiction 
according to limit of money you have to file your case to appropriate jurisdiction so now test evolved in of jurisdictional aspects in cyber law there are main three types of test minimum contact theory sliding scale theory effect test and international targeting first one is minimum contact theory in our previous slides we see personal jurisdiction uh, have a problem then both parties are from different territories and that problem can be solved with minimum contact theory so now let us understand about what uh, minimum contact theory the test is applicable where both and any of the party are outside territory jurisdiction of court in that case both territory uh, both parties like criminal and victim can be from out of territory and one of these like victim can be out of the territory so both of any party are outside the territory jurisdiction of the court a uh, minimum contact means victim and criminal have some contact with the territory for example a accident uh, accident is taken place in punjab so now case is related to punjab another example let us understand another example like bank but the uh, headquarter of bank is in delhi for example any bank which headquarter in delhi but a branch in punjab and if a bank fraud like they uh, take money from the people then punjab court can hear the uh, case and can pass judgment because there are minimum contact contact with the punjab like money so any asset and any business related that territory also both parties are outside the territory then jurisdiction can take decision so minimum contact theory is applicable for non resident defendant so uh, criteria let uh, let us check that exercise of jurisdiction must be reasonable the client must one uh, defend a forum related activity there must be some related activity uh, we take an example of bank there is a related activity because bank fraud with punjab uh, punjab residents and the exercise of jurisdiction must be reasonable because there is a criminal activity just to understand about exercise of jurisdiction must be reasonable with the another example for example a accident taken place but car hit by a tree in that case exercise of jurisdiction is not reasonable because there is no loss of any property so case must be reasonable there is a related activity for example if we are uh, taken punjab territory then activity must be related with punjab and if we are uh, talking about jurisdiction of haryana then there the activity must be related to haryana the next theory is sliding scale theory this is also known as zippo test and it is it provide jurisdiction for interactive website it is not applied on passive websites interactive website means uh, the website uh, with which user can interact so on the basis of interactivity of website where jurisdiction is decided the more number of inter, uh, inter activities the more court have personal jurisdiction over it in former state
the third theory is effect test and international targeting few condition are required to be satisfied for effect test mainly action taken expressly against the forum state with the knowledge and intention that it will injure the state if the court thinks fit that defendant action caused injury to the forum state then personal jurisdiction is asserted in cyber space court there there no contact is present as we know in minimum contact there must be activity related to that jurisdiction predatory jurisdiction but effect test from name is clear there will be a effect by a activity in effect te a test with the activity effect is in effect test test any activity that affect another person but there is no content that is present for example a author publish in their magazine uh regarding jones that jones is alcoholic john is not a resident of that territory there are person john for example that from country a a publisher of country b it launch newspaper in country c so now it publish newspaper in country c and it affect johan because it uh, give a fake statement about johan so now there is no contact means there is no uh, activity that is related to asset but this affect johan so now johan can take action can file a case in jurisdiction country c as well as in country b so this is the effect test and international targeting so in effect test a action that against any state or person with knowledge so now knowledge is related here that is all about experiment 1